Hi, right, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss an alliance that was formed in the Welsh Parliament and how a similar alliance could be formed after the next Westminster general election if we can just manage to displace the Conservatives. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, for the avoidance of doubt, I want to use a term here, progressive alliance, and it's used quite a lot. Uh, the term is banded about a lot and a lot of use it. And there are different forms. There's no, like, definitive form of it. Um, but a lot of it talk about a, a deal going into the next general election, not how it's going to work. Um, for, for my money, you cannot form a progressive alliance before the election. Right? Before the election, the cooperation would be more properly termed, in my view, an electoral pact. And I'm going to discuss more on that later this week because there's a lot of... Uh, information and misinformation going around and there's a lot of things changing. But for now, the Progressive Alliance, for me, is what needs to form after the next election. It will need to form because no one party will win a working majority and, and it will not be possible to form a coalition either. But before I get onto that, let's look at what's happening in Wales because it's quite exciting in its own way. Um, now, hey, I'd actually better off start by saying this or I'll get into trouble. There is also an alliance in Scotland between the SNP and the Greens. And yes, this also shows how you can have an alliance of parties without a formal coalition. It's also similar to Wales in that the, uh, there was a similar parliamentary arithmetic at play. But although their agreement, the SNP and the Greens, included common policy aims, the alliance has been formed really for the purpose of pushing Scottish independence uh, rather than a legislative agenda, even though there is one. So although it is a model of an alliance without a coalition, it's not really a model that can be mapped onto a possible alliance for Westminster. And that's what I'm wanting to do here. What is happening in Wales is very interesting. But the big prize for me is something similar for the whole of the UK. So during the Welsh elections earlier this year, Labour won enough seats in the Senate to retain power. However, it was with exactly half the seats, 30 out of 60, which was a bit better than in the previous parliament where they also formed a minority government, but still not a majority, much less a working majority. It means, yes, they fill ministerial posts, but they need to work with other parties to get things through the Senate. Fair enough. But there's a problem with this. Uh, you can try and implement a policy or pass legislation negotiating with other parties and then it fails because uh, you couldn't quite get the numbers. You know, a lot of parliamentary time is then wasted on a dead end. Much better to know in advance that you've got the numbers needed. So Labour and Plaid Cymru, the Welsh National Party, have formed an alliance to last three years along the lines of a common manifesto of policy aims. Now, note that the alliance lasts three years. It's not a coalition. It will end with enough time for them to be doing their own thing, working against each other ahead of the next set of elections. But it's a three-year period of cooperation to push reforms that are in both of their interests. It even includes electoral reform. They're going to push to increase the size of the Senate and improve the level of proportional representation. Because it has to be remembered when people talk about PR, oh, we've got PR in Wales and Scotland. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. Some are elected by proportional representation. Most are first past the post. It's a terrible system. Get it all PR. So they're going to push for a greater um, level of proportional representation in the Senate. The two parties together also account for 72% of the seats. So that's a strong majority for anything that they have agreed to work on. So as well as electoral reform, it's also going to include work on reaching net zero, improved, not in three years, but plans for it, improved transport links, flood management, rent control, ending homelessness, a national care service. You read this uh, agreement and it's like, it's like they've nicked my wish list and are implementing it as I watch, which is a real model for how things could work across the UK. And you can see why I'm particularly interested in this one, because the list of policies, it's like, oh, that's brilliant. And it's going to begin imminently, assuming it gets, the, it does have to get the approval of party members, but I've got no idea why it wouldn't. Because what they've basically done is said, what policies do we both agree on? Let's do them. So come the next UK-wide general election, assuming it's not next year, then this Welsh alliance, potentially the Scottish one as well, should have shown the way with some achievements already in the back. 
And let's think about what the next Westminster Parliament could look like. Actually, no, let's first of all look what it can't look like. It can't look like a Labour majority. If anyone has got any notions of that, it needs to be dispelled immediately. It's really this simple. Labour can only win a majority with a lot of Scottish seats. Not happening. The SNP are well established and people are reasonably happy with their government in Holyrood. This will translate into retained support in Westminster as well. Granted, there's not a direct correlation. It's perfectly possible to vote SNP in the Scottish elections and Labour in the, the Westminster elections, but that's not how most people are going to function. You know, it isn't enough for Labour to suddenly do better at campaigning or present a, a stronger deal for Scotland. In order to displace a political party, the first element is showing how that currently dominant party is not doing their job right. The second is in showing that you would do it better. Now, across Britain in general, it's very easy to show how the Conservatives aren't doing their job right. But that was evident even in 2019. Boris Johnson didn't even bother to argue against that. Where Labour failed was in not showing that they would do better. So people sort of went with better the devil you know. Labour need to not be a devil at all. <laughs> you know, they... They either would have done better, but it's not enough for me to say that or Labour to say it. They have to persuade people of it with a small number of clear pledges that people believe would be achieved and would improve their lives with immediate effect. But in Scotland, well, there are things you can absolutely criticise the Scottish government for. It's actually quite funny. I'll sometimes get comments on the channel about, you know, when I'm talking about what the Tories are doing, what the latest little uh, shenanigans are. And they go, oh, yeah, this is why we should have Scottish independence. And I'm going... Mate, I'm talking about what they're doing in England. If this is devolved, if you've got a problem with this in Scotland, it's the Scottish government that can do this. But also, although there are things you can criticise the Scottish government for, they have been made to look really good in comparison with Boris Johnson. Like, even if Labour suddenly became very good at campaigning, which is a hell of a big if that I do not see on the horizon, Tory incompetence, ironically, still keeps the SNP in power. So Labour aren't taking Scotland. Forget it. It's not happening. You know, they'll do well just to get a few more seats. And that would be a real big improvement. So no Labour majority. It's not happening. So does that mean a coalition? No. Because, again, if you're realistic, if you look at the target seats for Labour and you look at the target seats for the Lib Dems, Labour plus the Lib Dems are not going to get a majority. It's not on. There's no electoral electorally possible routes to either a majority non-Tory government or even a coalition. The best case scenario, best case scenario, is that Labour have more MPs than the Conservatives. And that, it's not even necessary for this alliance for that to happen, but that is your absolute best case scenario. That's everything going right. But it'll still be well short of a majority, no matter how well things go, being realistic. So Labour in that situation, would be allowed to rule as a minority government because they'd have the most MPs. But then what to do about their manifesto? No point pushing for things that you can't get through Parliament. Obviously, the Conservatives will block almost everything, if not everything. Even if they agree with it, they'll block it, just like the Republicans in the US Congress. So Labour will need both the Lib Dems and the SNP to support their legislative agenda. But that means negotiating with them in advance of presenting anything to Parliament. Otherwise, you have the same problem I highlighted earlier. You push a policy. You think it's got cross-party support, but then it turns out some little detail or just party politics means that it fails. You waste a lot of parliamentary time and the new government look weak. Helps nobody but the Tories who will remind people that when they were in charge, things got done. With this current Labour minority government, nothing's getting done. The only way is Tory. So it would be in everyone's interest for Labour, the Liberal Democrats, the SNP, as well as, as Plaid and the Greens and anyone else who wants to get together to work on a manifesto that they all support. And there would be loads, because that's the thing as well. You know, they're all different parties. They've all got different things. You know, there'll be people in Labour who will bellyache because of particular... Like, they're already doing it now, because Keir Starmer's already had to drop a couple of, uh, of firm commitments. And they go, oh, he said this, and he did say that, and he shouldn't have said that. But at the end of the day... The policies he's talking about are the ones that the Lib Dems and the SNP won't support. You know, you've got to... But there are huge areas of common interest in electoral reform, climate emergency policies, healthcare, education, justice system, taxation, closer alignment with the EU, and so on. You know, given that we'll have had over, probably well over, a decade of Tory damage, the Venn diagram of policies amongst these parties should still provide several years' worth of fruitful legislation and funding. 
The only difficulty that I can foresee is if the SNP look at it and go, well, hang on a minute, if Labour look like they're achieving things, then that does two things. First of all, it drains away some support for independence. Like, just as Boris Johnson and his Tory thugs are boosting the case for breaking up the UK, so, you know, reversing that situation, getting a government that acts in the national interest will cost some. Secondly, it could even result in people talking about comparing the SNP, not the SNP with the Tories, I mean, there's only one winner of that in Scotland, but between the SNP and Labour, for which there is a conversation to be had. But it could equally be the case that the SNP successfully remind everyone that what's happening in the UK is being done with the support of the SNP. It's only possible because of the SNP. In addition, like I said before, to displace the dominant party, it's not enough for Labour to look good. There has to be a level of dissatisfaction with the current government because, again, it's like, it's up, for people, it's always a bit of an unknown change in government. If they're happy enough, with even if they're not ecstatic, if they're happy enough with the current one, they tend not to change it. You know, so I've seen no sign of, of significant dissatisfaction in Scotland. So the SNP should be able to support such an alliance without risking their support in Scotland, which means that party politics shouldn't really throw a, a spanner into this. But you never know. But the point is that there would be a legislative agenda on offer that would be very, not just accepted, but actually be something that the SNP, Labour, Lib Dems, Greens, Plaid would all want. You know, that would appeal to the, all the progressive parties and we could easily have a model for this being demonstrated in Wales and even Scotland. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.